welcome back to Sports Design School. Now today on the channel, I'm gonna be walking you through this awesome Josh Allen design that I put together. I'm gonna walk you through layer by layer so you can recreate this exact look for yourself. At the end of the video, I'm even gonna give you the free PSD file so you can go in and create your own design using the files that we create in this video. Now, if that sounds good to you, drop a like on the video and let's jump in. So I'm gonna start off by creating a new document in Photoshop. You can do this by hitting File, New, and for now, I'm just gonna leave my width at 1080 with a height of 1350, my orientation vertical with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. I also have my color mode in RGB. I'm gonna hit Create, and I'm gonna start off by dragging over this final compressed image so we can simply have something to refer back to throughout this tutorial. Now you notice the background of this image is just kind of a solid blue with a texture overlaid on top. And so to do that, I'm simply gonna hit solid color and hit okay. And then I can hide this layer and simply double click on this square and select the blue from my design. I'm then gonna drag in both Josh Allen cutouts that I use in this design. I'm simply gonna drag them in from this other document that I've already created. And then I'm gonna scale them to match the original. Now you notice the bottom part of this back cutout slowly fades in, and that's actually super easy to recreate. I'm simply gonna go here to my back cutout. I'm then gonna go down and press this add a layer mask button. From there, I'm gonna make sure that my layer mask is selected and not the cutout itself. So you can simply click on this white rectangle and then I'm gonna hit G on my keyboard to bring up my gradient tool. I'm then gonna make sure my gradient tool is set to black to transparent. Now, if you're not familiar with how to do this, simply click on this box right here, and then you can play around with the different gradient presets. Now with my black to transparent gradient selected, I'm gonna make sure I have my linear gradient mode turned on. This will essentially make it so I can create a linear gradient versus a radial or some other type of gradient. I'm then gonna click and drag up from the bottom, holding shift to make sure my gradient is nice and straight. I'm gonna do this a couple more times to slowly fade in at the bottom. And you can see this actually looks pretty good. Now one thing I always like to do when dealing with a cutout that isn't lit super well is add an inner glow. We can simply do this by clicking on our layer, double clicking and hitting inner glow. Now I'll play around with the settings a little bit, but what I recommend is usually going with linear dodge add with a color of white. I'm overall satisfied with something like that. Now I'll turn it on and off just so you can compare. Adding an inner glow just adds a nice lighting that makes it feel more professionally lit than if we just had the cutout by itself. Now from there, I think we have the opportunity to play around with some cool blending modes to really interact with this nice solid background color. So I'm gonna simply go down here and scroll until I find one that I really like. Now I really like the way the pin light blending mode is making my colors in my cutout appear. And so I'm gonna stick with that one for now. I'm then gonna to go to my front cutout and do the same inner glow effect. So I'm simply gonna go and hit inner glow. And this time I might turn the size down a little bit, but overall that looks pretty good to me. We have our back cutout and our front cutout, but our background looks a little bit flat. Now this is usually where I go and look for a nice texture. I'm gonna to go to pexels.com, and for now I'm just gonna search brush. Now if you're not familiar with Pexels, Pexels is a great place to find high quality images that are completely free to use, and so it's a great resource for up and coming designers looking to have high resolution images and resources. And I think I really like the way this one looks. So I simply took that texture off of Pexels and dragged it into my design, and now I'm gonna drag it below all of my layers. And that looks pretty cool on its own, but I wanna play around a little bit with the blending modes once again to see if I can get the texture to how I want it. After trying a few different options, I think I really like the way this darker color blending mode applies to this image in the background. Now, once we're here, I'm gonna add a levels adjustment and add this as a clipping mask to that background. Essentially, I just wanna bring out more of that texture that we just dragged in, and so I can simply go here and drag my slider a little bit. And you can see as I drag it to the right, more of the black parts of this image are coming out, which is exactly the look I'm going for. Now I'm really satisfied with the way this image is turning out so far, but it looks like this back cutout looks a little bit dark. Now I have my layer blending mode set to pin light, which when I added in this darker texture overlay, it probably is bringing some of the shadows and highlights in my image down a little bit. So I'm simply gonna create a layer underneath it, hit G on my keyboard to bring up my gradient tool. And this time I wanna make sure my gradient is white. 
So I simply am going to select white here in this color selector. Now you can see my gradient is set to white to transparent. I'm then gonna turn on radial gradient mode and then simply drag holding shift for a straight line to something like that. Now I'm not in love with the way this looks. I think we need to play around with the fill a little bit. I'm really liking the way that these colors are interacting, specifically in the visor. I think it's a pretty cool look. Now to really separate my front cutout from my back cutout, I'm gonna add a nice gradient to the bottom of my image. I'm simply gonna create a new layer, this time selecting a black gradient. I'm just gonna drag this up from the bottom. And then I'm gonna turn down my fill. Now I like the way these two cutouts look, but I think there's some styling that we could do to make them look a little bit more unique. I'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer and then add that as a clipping mask to my back cutout. I'm then gonna drag down around my mid highlight area and then drag this point right here up a bit. I'm then gonna duplicate this curves adjustment layer by holding Alt and dragging up and then creating a clipping mask on our front cutout as well. Now you notice in our reference image, there's a white kind of brush stroke around the back cutout. And I kind of did that to make it look a little bit more hand painted. And so to do that, I simply created a new layer behind my cutout and then hit B on my keyboard to bring up my brush tool. And then I have this really cool brush pack called Van Gogh Art Brushes. This is me from the future asking you to please like the video if you haven't already. Liking the video helps our channel so much and it's completely free. And if you're enjoying the video so far, tap the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any of our future sports design tutorials. I'm gonna make sure my brush size is set to 280 and then I'm gonna make sure my brush color is set to white. I'm then simply gonna go through and trace around my cutout. From there, I'm gonna turn my fill down a little bit. And that's looking pretty good to me. Now, I also added a motion blur by going to filter, blur, and motion blur. And I set my distance to about six pixels. I just wanted a subtle blur. Now from here, I found this really cool embroidered Buffalo Bills logo. So I simply dragged that into my image and then scaled it down. From here, I simply selected my object selection tool and hit select subject, and then created a layer mask from that. And then converted that to a smart object, and then I can position this into my scene. Next, I created this really cool border. I simply opened up my rectangle tool, and then clicked and dragged all the way around the edges of my image. And I'm gonna play around with my stroke until I get it to about where I want it to be. There's better ways to create logo patterns using tools like Adobe Illustrator, but for simplicity's sake, I just kept this entire process in Photoshop. For this, all I did is went to Google and Googled Buffalo Bills logo, and then I dragged in this image right here. And then I'm gonna bring up my magic eraser and erase this red background. From here, I'm gonna convert it to a smart object and then scale it down a bit. From here, I'm gonna hide my reference image and bring this logo on top of my white border as a clipping mask. Now you can see the Bill's logo was clipped to the border of my image. I can then rotate it slightly. That looks pretty good and duplicate a layer and then simply rotate the image each time. Now I want to add a little bit more dimension to my image. So I'm going to go to my back rectangle and add a drop shadow. Simply double click and hit drop shadow and play around with the settings until I get something that looks like I want. I'm gonna add in this text, and to do this, I hit T on my keyboard, I can just type. I'm gonna type in Alan, and then Josh. To add more spacing, I'm gonna drag my VA slider right here, and then scale the font down a bit. Now, the font I'm using for this design is called Bruda Pro. This is just a demo font, but if you want to download the full version, I definitely recommend it. I'll leave a link down in the description so you can check that out. I'm then gonna drag in this Bill's logo one more time. And this time I'm gonna use my magic eraser on every part that is not white. Hit color overlay and choose a white overlay. I'm then gonna scale it down and put it in the bottom left-hand corner of my image. Now I'm really satisfied with the way that this has turned out so far, but I need to add a few finishing touches. 
I'm simply gonna scroll down and hit shift on my bottom layer and hit command G to group all of my layers together. I'm then going to hit alt and drag down to duplicate this group and then hit control merge group. And essentially what I've done is taken all of my layers and merged them into one singular image. From here, I'm gonna hit command A and command J. And essentially all this does is clip our image so that we can apply our finishing touches more precisely. From here, I'm gonna hit control and convert to smart object. The reason I do this is so that any filters I apply from the standpoint, I can then go back and edit them or tweak them if I want to. I'm then gonna hit filter, camera raw filter, and I'm gonna go up to basic. I'm gonna start off by turning up my shadows a little bit. I'm also gonna play around with the highlights a bit to turn them up to give it a nice HDR look. I'm gonna add a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity as well. From here, I'm gonna go into detail and I'm gonna add a good amount of sharpening. Then lastly, I'm gonna scroll down to effects and then add in some grain. I always recommend adding grain at this stage in the process so that you get a nice uniform grain across all of your different layers instead of a bunch of different layers having different amounts of grain. I'm gonna zoom out and hit OK. And you can really see the differences that those filters have made. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to our channel. We have tons more sports graphic design content coming out here shortly, and I guarantee you don't wanna miss out on that. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.